Yeah, I think it's broken. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. Well, you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, in today's video, I'm going to talk about the importance of keeping your gear serviced and we're going to talk about how often you should be servicing your gear as well. Now, I've got one of my salvage divers or one of my instructor's gear here with me and his inflator valve has completely malfunctioned. It is just flowing air out the mouthpiece. So every time you put air in, it's just coming right back out and it is actually time to service it. So I'm going to break it down and I'm going to surface it here on camera for you. But at the same time, I'm going to talk about the importance of making sure your gear is ready to go at any given time. And we'll talk about the right intervals of when you should have your gear serviced. So let's talk about servicing gear. First of all, how often should you service your gear? Well, when it needs it, right? And everybody says, well, you should do it once a year. That's what most training agencies uh, preach. Um, the truth of the matter is you should service it when it needs it. And each manufacturer is going to be a little bit different on their service interval. In the case of this particular brand, this is Mares. That's our primary brand that we sell. They have a two-year life on them um, and, or a two-year recommendation of when it should be serviced. Um, to be honest with you, as an instructor and as a professional diver who's in the water seven days a week, I actually service my gear probably about once every six Six months um, and that is going to be a little bit excessive but it's also based off how many dives you make you know I'm averaging 20 dives a week easily so you can see all the wear and tear that my equipment gets um, in the in the case of this particular inflator this inflator belongs to one of our instructors and he's putting probably about 20 dives a week on it as well so and this is his actual salvage rig as well so it's going to get a little bit more wear and tear than what the average instructor's equipment is going to get so it's going to take a beat and it's going to get a lot of exposure to um, all different types types of hazmatic environments and things like that so we typically service ours about once every six months but for you it's going to be anywhere between say a year to two years based off how much you dive and based off what the uh, gear manufacturer says but um but i'm just taking my time here i'm very slowly disassembling his inflator here making sure i don't miss anything um and making sure that i don't lose any parts one of the hardest things to do is not lose parts whenever you're servicing gear especially when you get into the rebuild there's a lot of small o-rings and things like that that can very easily get lost if you're not careful so you just want to take your time whenever you're servicing gear like this just to make sure that you don't lose any parts so in the past we've done videos about servicing equipment and things like that and a lot of you have asked in the comment section how do you get certified to work on equipment like this um, there's several ways that you can do it certain manufacturers will uh, offer classes or they will certify any individual to be able to do it um, your larger companies Mares, scuba pro aqualung things like that most of them you're going to have to be uh, part of a, a dive shop um, you're going to have to be sometimes professional as well. So it just depends on the manufacturer, but there's classes all over that you can take for it. There are certain manufacturers that will only sell to certified technicians or um, technician centers like us, like we're a technician center for Mares as well. But you can just check into that. If you are a dive pro, ask the local training center that you're a part of and, and see what they offer as well. You can take the um, equipment techniques course through SS. Now, it's not really going to show you how to break equipment down and, and service it and rebuild, but it will show you how to clean certain parts of your equipment that you're not going to learn in your open water program. And speaking of cleaning, that's the next step here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean out the housing of his inflator and just make sure everything's clean. And then I'm going to clean each and every individual part here. Now, we typically have two types of parts. We have metal parts that are in general in general not replaceable meaning we don't replace them when we rebuild them and then we have plastic parts and a lot of times the plastic parts along with some of the rubber o-rings and things like that do get replaced um, some people will say well are there any parts that you can reuse well yeah sure there's a lot of times that static o-rings do not get replaced and things like that in the case here all the plastic parts are going to be reused all the metal parts are going to be reused but we're going to simply replace all the o-rings and that's 
uh, what comes in your rebuild kits a lot is basically just bunch of little small plastic parts and o-rings as well but i'm just doing just a basic cleaning here i've got a very very mild detergent um and a little jug of water there and i'm just using an old toothbrush to kind of scrub through it if there's any heavy corrosion one of the things that i will do is take the uh, metal parts and i'll put them in an ultrasonic cleaner and there's different types of mixtures that you can put in it i usually just use either a vinegar and water 50 50 blend or i'll put a little bit of simple green and water and just kind of dilute it down and that's typically what I'll use in a ultrasonic cleaner. Here I've just got just a few little small drops of Dawn dish detergent and a little bit of water, maybe about two cups of water. And I'm just using it as a mild detergent to clean off all these parts. Now, one of the things that I'm not going to do is rinse these parts off or dry them. Um, because I'm using such a mild detergent, it's not that big a deal to just leave some of that uh, soap that's on those parts on there. And I don't, I'm not really that concerned with drying them off like I would, say, in a first stage regulator. In a first stage, we don't want any moisture, so I'd make sure all those parts are nice and dry before I uh, reinsert them back into the first stage housing. But here, it's not that that big a deal because these parts are getting wet anyways anytime you go underwater so it's not really that big a deal but now that everything's cleaned up i'm going to go ahead and kind of remove the dirty towel there and rebuild the system and as i'm rebuilding the system like i said all i'm doing is just replacing certain parts now, thanks to a little bit of movie magic here, I've went ahead and replaced all the O-rings that needed to be replaced. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the reassembly phase here. Um, the reassembly phase sometimes can be actually a little bit more difficult than the uh, disassembly phase. Just because you want to make sure that you get everything put back in place the way it's supposed to be. And if you get out of order sometimes, then you can create some difficulty um, with the reassembly phase and it's just like putting on your scuba gear think about this for a second if you were to put your scuba gear on in the improper order think of all the trouble that could cause could you imagine putting your fins on first and then trying to put your wetsuit on wouldn't work very well would it so it's the same thing here i want to make sure that i'm going in a proper order to reassemble everything i want to make sure everything is nice and snug but not overly tightened and i want to make sure that i'm using the right tools to reinstall just like i use the right tools to um, disassemble the system as well so once again i'm just taking my time i'm working my way through it now i do have a manual if you've been in this industry as long as i have and you've serviced as many uh, reg sets and bcs as i have th this stuff it's easy to memorize how to do but i do have a, a manual on the computer that i can kind of use a guide to assist me if i need to know a certain part number or something like that but the more you do this it does kind of become muscle memory but i'm still taking my time i don't want to be complacent i don't want to forget a part i just want to make sure that i do my due diligence and I get this inflator back in uh, working order to the best of my ability. So let's kind of recap here. How often should you service your equipment? Uh, in short, when it's needed, whether it's a one-year or two-year service interval based off the manufacturer or based off how many dives it's on it, or if it just simply malfunctions, you are going to get your gear serviced, or if you are a technician, you're going to service your equipment when it is needed. If you're the type of diver that only dives in the summer and you let your equipment sit all winter long, then you may want to take it in for a good thorough cleaning before you start diving again and just to make sure that it is going to work now once again you can take the equipment techniques course from ssi and it's going to kind of show you how to store your gear how to clean your gear and how to take good care of your gear to prolong the life of it but you still do not want to neglect it by not taking it into a certified technician for servicing when it's needed but as I get to the end of this, a couple things I want you to take away. One, your gear is life safety equipment. If you take good care of it, it will take good care of you. I can promise you on that. The second thing I want you to remember is it's an investment. You put an investment in your equipment, so take good care of it. Service it when it's needed to be serviced, and it will last you a lifetime, or at least as long as you want it to last you. So I'm going to go ahead and put the last little part in. Now this last part that I'm installing, I do want you to think of one last thing as well. Your 
putting a lot of metal parts in a plastic housing. So if this is something that you do, if you're servicing it, or if it's something that you're cleaning, you want to be very, very careful anytime that you're putting metal into plastic because you can strip out the housing very easily. And if you do, then that pretty much ruins the entire system. So always be careful. Do not ever over tighten things down and just go by the manufacturer specs and you should be fine. But that's going to be it for this uh, servicing of this inflator here. Pretty simple procedure something that needed to be done and something that um, if you do in the proper way then of course you're not going to have any issues with it the inflator is something that can tear up and does tear up from time to time this is why during the open water course we learn how to uh, disconnect and reconnect the inflator hose but it's usually just a pretty simple fix it's usually just tighten something down or replacing an o-ring and um yeah, it gets you right back diving. Most of the O-rings that go in here, you can get to put in your Save-A-Dive kit, and it's an easy fix. There you go guys, very simple fix. It's something that you should be checking every time you go dive, but it's something that you may wanna get repaired or serviced at least once a year or once every two years based off what the manufacturer of equipment that you wear and whatever their recommendations are. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always guys, we appreciate your business.